Julian Osgood Field was an American writer, sometimes writing as XL or Sigma. Born in 1852 in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, the son of Monsell Bradhurst Field, assistant secretary of the treasury to Abraham Lincoln and Julia Stanton. He lived in London and Paris and became a close friend to Prince Albert Edward, the future King Edward VII. In 1901, he was sent to prison for three months for forging a document in order to try and obtain a loan and in 1915 he was imprisoned for another 18 months for conspiracy to defraud Francis Bennett Dobbs with the help of Lady Ida Sitwell, who had herself sued him for fraud in 1914. He died in 1925. He occasionally wrote fiction for magazines, though he only published a handful of novels. The majority of his books seem to have been scandal-mongering gossip and society books, like Things I Shouldn't Tell and uncensored recollections. In 1894, several of his stories, published in the Pall Mall magazine, were issued together in the collection Out Diabolus Out Nihil and Other Tales. In Out Diabolus Out Nihil, Abbe Henri Giraud prepares to go to dine with the Duke Octave de Frontignan to meet eccentric millionaire Paul Pomerancef. Giraud, who had grown to be quite a cynic during his many years as a bear, finds both men believing in spiritism to be quite absurd, but then Pomerancef offers to show Giraud the devil in a private seance, which is indeed what he does to the Abbe's shock and consternation. A waltz of Chopin has the narrator meet copyist Rosaline Tudor, a lad of twenty trying to buy a doll but having lost the money. Feeling pity for the man, the narrator buys the doll for him, only it is actually for a little girl placed in his care who happens to be dying. The story concerns mostly the tragic events surrounding Rosalyn, however the story introduces a recurring character, the physician Marix, who delights in the prospect of convincing a condemned man to try and show just how long his head will live for after being cut off. A Kiss of Judas concerns one Lieutenant Colonel Richard Roven, who on his way to Constantinople comes across medical student Isaac Lebedenko, a strange man whose face is constantly covered up by a muffler. Insulted that the Colonel should ask around whether he is a leper, the Moldavian decides to fight him, in doing so revealing his deformed, monstrous mouth. Lebedenko wants to fight Roven still, but is unable to do so. He later confronts the colonel, knife in hand, and then Roven proceeds to impale him through both hands to a tree, and then leaves him there, thinking that even if he starves to death, Roven was being merciful in not having him freed and then publicly lashed. However, what he does not know is that Lebedenko may be one of the so-called children of Judas, vampiric entities who, however, must commit suicide to be able to truly harm him. And as you can imagine, that does indeed come back to bite him, as it were. The strange story of a diamond concerns Sostain de Valerius, a shining beacon of Parisian society, who encounters a certain Lecomte, who sells him a diamond he claims is fake, even saying no one else will believe it is fake, swindling him in the end. It is the weakest and least interesting of the lot, but seems interesting in light of Field's history as a con man. In The Luck of the Devil, Mr. Seymour Mordaunt is being blackmailed due to his own habit of cheating at cards to leave Britain forever, lest he be exposed. But Seymour does not have the money to do so. He intends to borrow some, and then either win enough at gambling or kill himself if he should lose. But he, in the course of the evening, meets a girl that is to be his talisman to bring him luck at the table. Only she is to be ignorant of these matters by virtue of being stuffed inside of a trunk, strangled. And indeed, her corpse at his side seems to bring him unnatural luck. But for how long? The stories are interesting, and one does wish that Field had written more instead of writing about scandals and society though I suppose he did so because it paid better.